Hello, everybody. It's great for you to be here. Thank you for joining me and drawing with me. I really appreciate all those who uh, come and draw with me. Today, we're going to be drawing with ink. Uh, I'm going to be using a Pigma Micron pen and number two pencil and a kneaded eraser on just some good drawing paper. So come along with me and, and let's do a little practicing and figure out this thing called ink. So the big thing here is the texture, texture in the scales and things like that, texture in the wood. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is figure out where everything goes. We have to kind of compose this in such a way that it's kind of interesting. So I'm going to I'm going to leave myself a little bit more room on the bottom than I do on the top. Here, his head is almost right in the middle. The bottom of his head is about right in the middle. But I, I don't want to do that. I'm going to leave it, move it up a little bit and have a little more room for the wood. And your base down here is going to be a little thicker, a little nicer, a little, a little better. So the first thing we're going to do is with our number two pencil, we're going to just figure out where everything goes. So I'm just going to look at my simple shapes. I'm going to say, well, I want, I want his tail. And maybe that end, you can sort of see his tail just a little bit there behind the wood that plank. I want it to kind of come up that edge. So if it comes up here and then his little body turns and his head kind of comes out right there. And I can I can kind of say, well, his head needs to be about that big. Make it a little bit bigger than you think you need to. We often draw things too small. So if that's his head, the piece of wood kind of comes down off of there, and it parallels this edge. So you can kind of come down and kind of figure out where that goes. Now we've got a good size of things. You can drop that down. His little body's going to be somewhere up in there like that. A piece of wood kind of comes up. Part of it's chunked up here, and his little foot is just coming over the top of that one right there. And with the side of your pencil, you can now go ahead and draw whatever whatever you feel like you need to. Like you could start out with the eye and say, well, if if this space here is right, the eye is about right in the middle. So I can I can I can kind of come in here and say, well, that about the eye is about right in there somewhere. And you can adjust it, make it a little bigger, a little smaller, according to whatever you need. And if you wanted to, you can say, well, he's got this little eyebrow that's right there. And if you come to the top of that and go straight over, there's a little one that comes out right there off the nose. Bless you. If you ever like to draw fantasy things like dragons, uh, drawing lizards is a great way to start because you learn so much about scales and about structure because we base, at least modernly, we base dragons upon lizards like dinosaurs. Hasn't always been that way, though. If you look at Leonardo da Vinci, he had a little recipe for dragons, which part of it included camels. Think camels. But that's that's Da Vinci. His little arm is just about right in the middle of that space. If you just kind of find the center there and you go, oh, okay, his little arm's gonna be about right up in there somewhere. Kind of comes down and his little fingers are on this little little part that come over here. Kind of hard to see, but there's his little fingers. There's his little arm. I'm not going to worry about all the little spikes down his back or anything. All that I can do spontaneously. Because if I miss one or if I add a spike, that's not going to be a big deal. But the structure, the overall structure is important. And same thing with the wood. Nobody cares if it's exactly right. Come in there. A 
Same thing with his tail and all that stuff that's back in there. That can all be spontaneously done. All the wood can be spontaneously done. Nobody cares if that's going to be in the right place. But you got to put the eye, you know, the mouth and all that stuff where it goes or else people will go, oh, that looks weird. And I'm just going to add a little line there to help me figure out where the mouth is. Somewhere in there. And again, it's not that big of a deal if I'm slightly off. Because I can adjust it. And what is important is the head. Because that's where your eye goes. This is our emphasis area. And it's the area that's really in the most focus. Our photographer, who is probably using a telephoto lens, you can see how the wood here is out of focus and how this is out of focus. He's focused right into the head. And that's what we want to concentrate on, making sure that head looks good. I'm going to zoom into that head so that we can really see that. And we'll explore some of this texture with our ink pen. It'll be a lot of fun. The wood part and the wood texture, eh, it's not that big of a deal. We can, we can adjust that. <clears throat> so what's most important here, our emphasis area, is that we get the, those shapes pretty correct and then the values, the lightness and darkness, and the texture using our ink pen. So let's let's try that. We're going to go right to the head. Let's start with the eye. So as we go with our ink pen and we start with the eye, I just want to make sure that that eye is nice and round. I'm going to start with the, the corners of the eye. So this corner kind of arches just a little bit. So I'm going to have this little arch in there. And I'm just going to use these little zigzaggy lines. I don't want a straight line. Because it's textured, it's not, it's not hard. It's, there's not a hard line there. And if I need to adjust it, I totally can. A little dark shape right there. So I'm going to just throw that little dark shape in. So there's the corner of his eye. little dark shape over here, but it's, again, it's not a hard shape. So I'm just going to kind of zigzag through that. This whole shape of his eye, I'm going to zigzag through that. And then if there's something light, you just leave it out. So like the little highlight in his eye, I'm going to leave that out. I'm just going to go in, and you can use little dots, you can use dashes, little zigzags, whatever it takes. This is called cross hatching, just like we did with our sphere. And you decide how much of that you want to put in there. Once you establish where things go, you can just kind of zigzag through things. Dots and dashes, whatever it takes. And you just want that eye to have that nice shape that's in there. There's a little lighter edge that kind of comes around it. So rather than draw a line, I'm just going to use little dots to help me figure out where that little line is. Little dots and dashes. That just kind of helps me figure out where that edge is. Let me zoom into that. There we go. 
And then the rest of it, I can, I can use either little squiggly lines or I can just do little dots and dashes. I just need to shade in that, that area of darkness that's under the eye. And since they're kind of wrinkles, if I wanted to put in little, little wrinkles, I could just zigzag through those. I want my edge to be not smooth. So I can't do a, a smooth line through there. And over the eye, where his eyelid is, there's a little value there, and you can use little dots and dashes there too. And little zigzags, a little darker shape right there. There he is. Now, look at the top of his head, how light that is. Some of that, we may not even want to draw that in. It's sometimes all you need is a little dot or a little dash. And so if you want to, uh, I'm just going to come over here and start making these scales. And as I come over and I get to those light edges on the very top, I'm just going to leave them out. So here's the little scales across the top of his his brow. I'm just going to do these little squirrely kind of shapes. There's one there, one there, longer, thinner one right here. One back here. So just look at the shape and just zigzag through the shape. Don't draw a line around it. Just zigzag through the shape. And if you see a little wrinkle or a little scale, you can use little dots. Little zigzaggy lines. If you think to yourself, wow, that's really light, maybe I shouldn't put that in, don't do it. Now remember your mantra, when in doubt, leave it out. So I'm just going to go from the eye and just kind of rotate around the eye until I'm, I'm pretty much finished with the head. I can always come back in and do more. Here's a nostril, a little tiny little thing. Kind of comes off of here and comes down. It's about right in there. Little nostril. Where his mouth is, instead of drawing a line there, since there is no real definite edge, just bring those little zigzaggy and dots and dashes right down and allow that mouth to kind of take care of itself right there. You can use little dots and dashes. And you can zigzag through things. You can crosshatch. The more line you have, the darker the value. So you got to look at your scrap and you have to say, well, how dark is that? How dark can I go? Those little textures that you get with the dots can be very amazing. It's just, it's amazing what a few little dots will do. And when you're doing scales, just do the in-between parts. This is kind of like that little sign that we drew. You draw all the little grays in between, and then the little light edges will come through, and it'll look like scales. 
So just leave out those little light edges. Like I say, if you feel like, I don't know if I need that, don't put it in. You can always come back later. When you get to that point, you're up on the edge of that head. You just kind of say, well, okay. If I do this little edge and then it curves up, I might need a little dot over there, maybe a little line. Here's another little, little dark shape right there. Leave that part out, maybe put another little, little dots or dashes over there. Go ahead and leave a lot out. You think to yourself, wow, that's a lot to be left out. That's okay. You can always come back in later. You can always add more. Sometimes all it needs is a little dot for a dash. Underneath his chin is really quite dark. So I'm just going to hatch through most of that. I can just say, well, okay, I can kind of see where that shadow goes. You can just hatch through there. And that kind of defines that bottom edge. But look how much I left out up here. You get rid of your graphite, which I like doing. Get rid of your graphite. And there's that light edge that's along the top. Everybody knows it's there. You can draw it in. You can see it. No reason to draw it. Let it go. Leave it alone. You can use this, uh, the shadow that goes behind his head to kind of define that part of his jawline. And these little scales that are along here, don't draw every little scale. You could do little half circles if you want, or little smiley faces. So you can kind of come along and go, okay, here's a little scale, there's a little scale, there's a little scale, there's one, there's one in between. And these are just little tiny, they're almost like little smiley faces. And you only do them in the shadows. Don't don't worry if it gets really light, like right up in here, don't do it. If you have to, you can put a little dot in there. But there's no reason to, to do all of those. You just need enough to tell the viewer what that feels like. Little scales are just little triangles. So just put in these little triangles of, and leave out little spaces in between and it'll look scaly. We can always come back in and add more. Under his, his neck, where I've done these little cross hatching, if you go in and you just do some little, uh, little scribbles and you just kind of move and do a little scribble and move a little scribble, it's going to kind of feel like scales under there, even though you can hardly see them. 
but you still want to create that texture because he's pretty scaly under there. Under his belly, you can just scribble some, because it's shadow under there, you're going to need a lot of that stuff anyway. And when you need it a little darker, just go back over it. And again, you can use little dots in between what you already got. It's amazing what a little dot will do. Like I say, we can always come back into this and add more if we need to, which we probably will. I just kind of anticipate that. This little shape you see right there is probably his other finger or, you know, one of his little, because his leg is probably up and that's his little finger there. Maybe even down in there, that might be part of him as well. As you kind of see through the little wooden bench or post, whatever that is. I'm going to go ahead and start doing his back now. And I want to define everything so I can get rid of the graphite. So I'm going to try to define his back. But I don't want to draw a line there because there's some really light edges. So I'm just going to start doing these little, little zigzaggy triangular shapes. There's one there. I'll try to get them pretty close to what I see. But if not, I can always adjust it. I can always change them a little bit. Some of these are really light on the end, so you could just maybe do a little dot or a dash just to say, hey, I can see where that is. That's a little lighter. I guess if you have to, you can count them and kind of figure out how many you need. I'm going to do these little contoury kind of lines just down his back because I know it's a little dark there. I can see the little bumps of his scales, but somewhere in between, I'm just going to kind of do this. It also helps me to define where his leg goes, and I don't want to draw a line around his leg. I'm just going to let the texture of his back take care of that part of his leg. You can hardly see it anyway. So just let it go. Underneath, though, there's a lot of darkness right there. And then when I'm ready, I can start doing those little half moon shapes, but these are darker. So I'm going to do these little half moon shapes or these little smiley shapes, whatever you want to call them. And then I'll shade them in, just a couple little dots and dashes in the middle of them. Sometimes you can put the little dots or little dashes in between. And that's going to give you that texture. And they're just little scribbles. Try to put them in the right place, and you got it.
I remember some of the first dragons I ever did, I, I really wanted to do some fantasy stuff. I had a friend that had a gecko. So I went over to her house and we took pictures of her gecko and I she she would kind of pose him for me and everything and I used that gecko as inspiration for my dragon. I learned a lot that day that I never wanted to have a gecko or a or a uh, not a gecko, an iguana. They're a lot of work. You guys have iguanas? Anybody have an iguana? I don't. I have a Oh, they're, they're a lot of work, though, aren't they? Yeah, they are. you got to take care of them. They're kind of fragile. So these little spots, because they're darker on the bottom, and, and you can't really tell, but I, I kind of just do little... Little smiley face, and then put a couple little dots in the middle, maybe a little dot on top, and that's it. And then just little, little cross hatchy lines where it's a little darker. The more line you put in there, the darker it gets. So now I'm looking back at his head where I thought, oh, that's dark enough. And then I'm like, oh, no, I got to go darker here and there. So sometimes I'll just go back up in there and add a little bit of line just to darken some things. or some little spots, little dots. It's not always everywhere. You can, you can kind of pick and choose where it goes. Sometimes you just have to pick out the pattern if you can. Every, every animal kind of has a pattern in their scales or in their skin or their hair or whatever it is. There's a pattern. You just got to kind of find it. And as you draw it, just be aware of what that pattern is. Try to do your dots and dashes to the pattern and you'll have it. So now I'm just doing like little little U shapes, little squigglies. And if I need to go a little darker, I can just hatch through it. Just kind of find your pattern, hatch through it. Here's that, that wood in there, and rather than really define the edge, I'm just going to hatch through it and let the edge kind of define itself. We can always come back in and add more. Right now, I'll just let that little bit of darkness define itself. The farther you get away from the head, the more sketchy and spontaneous you can be. Because your viewer isn't looking down there so much. You want to keep that texture going, but there's no pressure here to do it perfect.
And that back leg gets, gets kind of lost a little bit, or that leg there. And that's okay, because it is in the picture, too. Don't worry about it. And when you're, you start to do like the little feet and the little hands, whatever, don't think fingers at all. Just think shadows. Do the little shadows and leave the fingers out. Let them go. You can always come back in and add more if you need to. Now I'm going to get to a point where I'm just starting to scribble. And and like the wooden part, don't do the edge on the wood part. Just do a couple of these little lines coming down that represents the grain of the, the wood. And I'm not even going to put it on the top. I'm just going to leave those little edges. Let them go. When in doubt, leave it out, okay? A lot of things that you don't need to draw. Sometimes it's better if you don't draw it. I'm just drawing the shapes of the dark. Whatever, whatever I can see, I'm just drawing those in. And if you think about it, you'd go, oh, yeah, that's his foot. But I wasn't thinking foot. I was just thinking shapes of dark and light. So stop thinking about it as a thing. It's not a thing. It's just shapes of dark and light. Do all those little shapes, and your thing will be there. Odd way of thinking, but it really is the best way. I'm so ready to get rid of this graphite. So go ahead and, and, I mean, the rest of it, really nobody cares about the wood. So I'm going to get rid of all that graphite that I had all over him. That's going to keep it clean, clean it up a little bit. Whew, all that graphite's gone. Now we just concentrate on the shapes of dark and light, whatever they are. I can't see what's going on behind there, uh, back there, but I, I assume his tail's going to continue on down there. I might be able to see part of it. Now I'm just taking a, some inspiration from that wood that's down there. I'm not, I don't have to dry everything. Just any of the dark areas, you can just go in and draw those. Again, when you're doing the wood, you just need enough to tell the viewer what that is. So don't, don't spend too much time on the wood. The, I'd spend more time on our little, little friend, the, the skink, than I would on the wood. And as you get to the bottom, you don't have to go off the page either. You can just kind of leave just a few little lines because the viewer understands it can, continues there. There's no reason to, to go all the way either.
Now I'm just cleaning up my little guy. I've got pretty much everything down here is okay. But my little guy needs to pop a little bit more. So I'm going to just darken in some areas. Just go back in and make sure he's okay. Just here and there. Like I say, sometimes all it needs is a dot or two or 20. I like the effect the dots give. Kind of that scaly effect. So I can add a bunch of little dots in there, especially in the darker areas. Good place for a signature is right down towards the bottom. You could even do it across... You know, the wood there or down here. I suppose you could even put it up here, but it's a little distracting up there. I'd probably put it down here somewhere. Uh, I'm going to put mine about right there. Well, thanks for drawing with me. I hope you learned something. I hope you have found some texture that you could use on dragons or, you know, other things that you've got there. But thanks for coming with me today and drawing along. And just remind you that art makes life better. Hope you have a lovely day.